Good readings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. It is Lee Gunlock. I am Eric. That is Mark, and we have to remind everyone. We have to put a, you know, a post, a PSA, uh, alert, alert. The LEC finals are still this weekend. They are still underway. We're weeks removed from competitive games elsewhere, but we're finally wrapping up the LEC split. It's kind of crazy that it's equal parts a joke and equal parts an actual PSA for people that might be missing out, might be forgetting, because we're in September, folks, and we have still not figured out who the LEC as champion is for this summer split. We will at the end of this weekend, and finally, after this long wait. You want a case in point of Riot saying speed this up. As soon as the finals are done on Sunday, they go, all right, we're doing World's Drop, right? <laughs> They might be on stage, quick shot steps on while they're doing a trophy uh, presentation. Say, oh, by the way, we're doing the draw for Worlds. <laughs> I, it's kind of crazy that it is being sandwiched right there, but it is that sign of we, we got to get this thing out there. We got to get this information out to these teams that have already qualified in all these other regions. Some have Heck qualified a month ago. The LCK and LPL are sending their very best to go play China versus Korea at the Asian Games pretty darn soon. Two weeks away, basically, and that massive tournament's getting underway. But, uh, yeah, we're finally getting the action from the LEC. Of course, it kicks off with Mad Lions against Fnatic. And now we get to see Wonder Unleashed with two weeks of practice. It was Renekton and Orn Duty against Adam. And, listen, if I'm being honest, on paper, this Wonder should be the biggest mismatch against any team that they oppose. You know, Adam definitely got some sizable leads, but Wonder stomached the disaster and held his own. But Chasey has been underwhelming for weeks or months now, so you feel like the one big advantage maybe you give to Mad Lions? Not so much. It ain't looking good for the Mad Lions when, as you said, that one advantage that you were looking at is all of a sudden kind of swung around given the performance lack thereof from Chasey throughout these last couple of weeks and more so extension of this summer split. And then you look at what Wonder has done in this playoff debut in for Fnatic, right? Stepping back in. And then what else he can do with another week of practice? What can be unlocked? You start thinking about the legacy, the history that he has built in the LEC and what is capable, how he can turn his play to the next level. What type of dark technology he could be cooking up in that top side. You start thinking about this as an advantage for Fnatic and one of those ones that if you're the Mad Lions fans, you can't be given over an advantage like this. The other angle I think Wonder brings is he is one of the most untiltable, not just top players, but players in the LEC. And Mental Boom has been an issue with this Fnatic roster in best of fives past. And I'm looking specifically in the jungle. For the head-to-head -head matchup, an all-Spanish matchup of El Yoya, Razork, and this is where the mental game really comes through because we've seen El Yoya in some best of fives when things don't go his way early game or maybe he's not able to execute the way that he wants. The mental can definitely take a shot in terms of a best of five and the boost that wonders, cracking jokes and laughing, I'm giving mental edge to Fnatic. I think it's one of those things where you can kind of play both sides of it when you look at a player like El Yoya, because yes, there is a bit about managing, you know, that tilt, that emotion that can come through so strongly, and even more so in these incredibly pressure packed situations, playing towards these finals, playing in front of crowds like this, that's what can happen uh, to a player. But when you're thinking about how you can get the next level from both of these two, I think El Yoya be having that type of aggression, having that type of fire, if it's harnessed, if it's able to be maintained well by the Mad Lions, that is your ticket to a team that is operating at a different type of level that could challenge, could be the ones that are taking the team, taking the fight to not just Fnatic, but G2 the next day. And, you know, we'll have his work cut out for him because Razor seems like he has a perfect read on the meta, the Ivern, the Poppy he's looked fantastic on. We'll see if there's some spicier picks coming through in the jungle. I'm giving a slight edge to Fnatic in this matchup because of, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, kind of that top side because Chasey hasn't been performing super well. But when we doubt Mad Lions the most, it seems to be when they come online the best. That is always when they surprise everybody. That's when they turn the tables 
and take the LEC for their own. Yes, that has been something we've seen from the Mad Lions, but I'm inclined to do the same. I am siding with Fnatic in this one. I think what we saw from Wonder is only the tip of the iceberg for what he could offer in this emergency type of role for the team. And then the other factor that I'm banking on is that bottom lane duo. Looking at Noah and Trimby, I think that this has been one of the most uh, the mega home runs that we have seen this summer split for Fnatic is getting that bot lane duo, having Trimby. And you want to talk about wonder cracking jokes? Having Trimby's type of attitude and personality on the team is another big boost for this Fnatic team and for these players that have had this history where you're looking for good things to happen, something to turn around, be that catalyst for them in these clutch moments. So maybe Fnatic gets the slight edge and the appetizer, but the problem is you get to the main course. Either squad are going to be massive underdogs against G2 in those finals, especially when you've got the top father playing at probably, not probably, definitely the highest level we've seen in Broken Blade's entire career. And that's a problem for whoever Mad Lions or Fnatic is sending up through because after all this talk about even Wonder leveling up and what is possible for him, well, the top father's had your number and he's had everybody's number this split and he certainly has been improving throughout this playoffs to round into form and round out this G2 lineup into something that is so formidable in the LEC. A lot of times you see a strong, dominant number one team start to emerge, but you still get to the finals and you have that little bit of an inkling of, okay, this could get spicy. This could get interesting because this other squad has shown that they can challenge. I don't think anyone is up to the level that G2 is able to produce right now in the LEC with this lineup. Of course, that bottom lane, Hansama, Mickey, what they're able to do. Yike, what he has been able to do and catalyze for this team as a rookie in the jungle. Caps, claps, they're certainly making their appearance. And yes, the top father, BB himself, holding down that top lane island. It's scary because I'd love to try to give you some reasoning that this finals, this one last match, is going to have something to provide that spice before we get to the world's draw? I don't think so, man. I think this is a done deal. Whoever gets there is cooked dinner for G2. And what you're talking about there is maybe the most interesting point about this version of G2 is we are so used to talking about Caps as the guy, the MVP level guy, the pop-off performer. But this current iteration of G2, he's maybe the third, fourth, maybe even fifth fifth member of G2 that you're talking about. Mickey's the MVP. Him and Han Sama are 2v2 dominating everybody. Broken Blade's getting multiple solo kills a game. Yike is the rookie of the year and looks like the best performing international EU player. And then you talk about Caps. He's not the focal point of this roster. And call me crazy. I don't want to go too over bounds here. Maybe there's a reason we were rolling with the baby faker nickname for all those early years of Caps because he's developing into this type of role, this type of impact he can have for a team somewhat similar to what Faker could do for T1 for all those years. How many times were we talking about he's not even the number one option you're dialing up for that damage for these kills? He's the brain. He's the one keeping everything together and operating at that level. Pretty clear Caps is operating and giving that to a squad like G2. Finding young talent like Yike and combining it with these veterans on this team. Absolutely a recipe for another championship for G2. Yeah, he's just transitioning to the next phase of his career. And by the way, still is the title gatekeeper of mid laners. If you can't beat him, you're not winning a uh, title in the LEC. And I can count on one hand players that have gotten the better of caps in a one-to-one -one mid lane matchup over the last what, five years since he's been on G2. I remember when Perks left to go to North America, there was still that talk. Who is the premier player of Europe? Was Perks the number one grab? All these type of things. And I think it has only become so clear that yes, as you as you laid out, the gatekeeper, the number one guy. If you're going to be anybody making names in the LEC, you got to be going toe to toe with Caps. And right now, ain't nobody taking him down when he's got backup from the rest of the G2 squad. Whoever wins that first round is going to need a steep exponential level up if they want to compete with G2 in these grand finals. But that is it today 
for League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties. And next time we will finally be able to look at the World Championship as the group draws behind us. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the flippy.